Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're testing out how the newly supported resizable bar feature works with NVIDIA's GeForce GPUs by testing out with the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3080 OC graphics card. Now, as I'm sure many of you are aware, resizable bar is a feature that we started to hear a lot about with the release of AMD's Radeon RX 6000 series. AMD was touting a new feature called SAM, which is an abbreviation for Smart Access Memory, but in reality, AMD had just rebranded an advanced PCI Express feature known as Resizable Bar. Essentially, AMD decided to support Resizable Bar on their Radeon 6000 series when paired with a 500 series motherboard using a Ryzen 5000 series CPU. By naming the technology AMD SAM, AMD made it sound as though this was a new technology that they developed and it would be exclusive to their products. But in reality, that was far from the case. Obviously though, this was a cunning marketing employee by AMD and with SAM producing performance uplifts of 10% or greater in a number of games, this new feature was creating a lot of buzz. After all, it is free performance and that's not something we often come by when testing new features. Simply enabling SAM boosted performance of the Radeon RX 6800 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla by 19%, 18% in Hitman 2, 14% in Borderlands 3, and 13% in Godfall. Those are some seriously impressive gains, and you're sacrificing nothing to achieve them. However, a deeper dive into SAM revealed a number of instances where performance was reduced, or there was very little in the way of a performance boost seen. In the end, when testing across a large sample of games, we found that on average performance was improved by just 3% at 1440p. Certainly not nothing, but not nearly as exciting as what the initial testing had indicated. Still, overall it was a net gain and would no doubt play a more important role in the future as developers start to design games with a resizable bar in mind. That being the case, at some point NVIDIA would need to jump aboard the resizable bar train, and with AMD pushing their features so heavily with their 6000 series, it made sense to act sooner rather than later. So act they did, and now the GeForce RTX 30 series supports resizable bar. Now there are a few things that you'll need to do in order to enable resizable bar on your GeForce 30 series graphics card. Firstly, the supporting VBIOS is required, but anyone who purchased an RTX 3060 already has the required VBIOS, so it's 3060 Ti, 3070, 3080, and 3090 owners who'll need to upgrade their VBIOS. For my test, I'm using the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3080 OC, and the process here for updating the VBIOS couldn't have been any easier. I simply navigated to the support tab on the product page at the ASUS website, clicked the driver and tools, then BIOS and firmware, downloaded the latest version and ran the tool which took just a few moments to complete and after a reset the VBIOS update was done. Next you'll require a compatible motherboard, so a board supporting the resizable bar feature and of course you'll also need to make sure that you have the correct motherboard BIOS installed that enables resizable bar. In my case, I'm using the MSI X570 Unify with a Ryzen 9 5950X, and it's already updated as I used it to test the Radeon RX 6800. Finally, you'll require the latest GeForce Game Ready driver. Support was added with the March 30th release, but at this point just use the most up-to-date driver and you'll be set. Once all of those steps have been completed, you can verify if resizable bar is working by opening the NVIDIA control panel and entering the system information section. Under the details section, you'll be able to find a resizable bar, and if it's working, the status will simply read yes. Now, something that I find really interesting about NVIDIA's implementation is a claim they made on their news post announcing support for resizable bar. They said the following. In practice, the performance benefits of resizable bar can vary substantially from game to game. In our testing, we found a few titles benefit from a few percent up to 12%. However, there are also titles that see a decrease in performance. So Nvidia will be pre-testing titles and using game profiles to enable resizable bar only when it has a positive performance impact. That way you won't have to worry about bugs or performance decreases, and you won't have to rely on the community to benchmark each title and discover whether Resizable Bar is beneficial in the games you're playing. So that all sounds pretty amazing. Basically Nvidia is saying you can enjoy all the benefits of Resizable Bar without any of the issues. Issues that saw performance regress by up to 7% in certain titles with the Radeon RX 6800. If true, this will be a big win for Nvidia and it'll mean their resizable bar implementation is much better than that of AMD's. At this point in time, the whitelist of supported resizable bar titles from Nvidia is fairly limited, consisting of just 17 games. 
Now, of those 17 games, I've tested a dozen, along with eight other games that aren't currently officially supported, so that could be quite interesting. Okay, I think it's about time we jumped into the benchmark results. Again, I'm testing it using the Ryzen 9 5950X on the MSI X570 Unify motherboard with 32GB of DDR4 3200CL14 dual rank dual channel memory. Then once again, the graphics card of choice for this test is the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3080 OC, and of course we are using the latest VBIOS and the latest driver. So let's get into it. Starting with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we find that at 1080p performance has been boosted by 8% and then 9% at 1440p, so some pretty nice gains there. Not nearly as big as the gains we saw from the Radeon GPUs in this title, but still an extra 8-9% to is certainly nothing to sneeze at. Unfortunately though, where we need a performance boost the most, at 4K, we're looking at basically nothing. Still overall a good result in this title. Frame rates in Forza Horizon 4 are already excessively high with the RTX 3080, but assuming these margins roughly translate down the product stack, then that is a good result. At 1080p, we're looking at an 11% performance boost, 9% at 1440p, and 6% at 4K, which is nice to see. So again, another good result overall, and that boost at 4K, while not massive, is certainly helpful. We're looking at a very mild performance uplift in Horizon Zero Dawn with resizable bar enabled, just 3% at 1080p, 5% at 1440p, and 4% at 4K. Not exactly anything to get excited about, but again, it's a small performance boost for free, so who's going to complain about that? Now, the gains in Borderlands 3 are also quite small. Here we're looking at just a 5% boost at 1080p, 4% at 1440p, and just 3% at 4K. Still, as I've already said, this is free performance, so any gains are welcomed. Interestingly, we see a reasonably strong 7% boost in Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p, but then nothing at 1440p and 4K. A 7% boost at 4K would have been nice, though we'd only be talking about a few extra frames here. Now, there are a number of titles like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order where performance went virtually unchanged, and really the results are within the margin of error. If we're to believe Nvidia's claims, we could be looking at a situation where resizable bar has been disabled to avoid a performance regression, as this isn't a whitelisted game, but more on that soon. Wolfenstein Youngblood also isn't a whitelisted game by Nvidia, and here we're seeing no change in performance, with virtually identical frame rate seen with and without resizable bar at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is another game that didn't make the NVIDIA whitelist, and again we're seeing no change in performance with resizable bar enabled. And perhaps that shouldn't be surprising given that it's not on the list, though we're also not entirely sure if NVIDIA's had a chance to test every single game just yet. Far Cry New Dawn also isn't a whitelisted game, but here we are seeing a performance regression with resizable bar enabled at 1080p and 1440p. So what is going on here? Shouldn't resizable bar be disabled here, as claimed by NVIDIA? The performance regression, it's not huge, but the 4% drop in frame rate at 1080p and 1440p was highly repeatable, so clearly the feature isn't being disabled here. But let's move on to an even more troublesome set of results. Watch Dogs Legion is a whitelisted game that's meant to benefit from resizable bar, and therefore see a performance improvement with it enabled. However, the opposite is true, with a rather substantial 10% performance reduction seen at 1080p and a 3% reduction at 1440p, or a massive 16% reduction when looking at the 1% low result. Again, these results were highly repeatable, and each time we saw a steep decline in 1% low performance with resizable bar enabled in Watch Dogs Legion. And we're not alone with these findings either. Other tech media have also found the same poor performance with resizable bar enabled on NVIDIA GPUs, and I've seen similar reports from users on forums and Reddit. And this is really quite odd given NVIDIA claims a 9% performance uplift in Watch Dogs Legion using an RTX 3080 at 1440p with the Ryzen 9 5950X on an X570 motherboard with 32GB of memory. It is possible some changes have been made since then that negatively impact performance. It is really hard to say as their results were published nearly two weeks ago now. Moving on though, the odd results don't stop with Watch Dogs Legion. Death Stranding also saw a reduction in performance at 1080p and 1440p with resizable bar enabled, despite being a whitelisted title. We did see up to a 9% increase at 4K, which is great to see, but the implementation here is hardly flawless with up to a 9% reduction seen at 1080p and 6% at 1440p. 
Now, we've individually looked at about half of the games I tested, and rather than spend a lot more time going over all the data, here's a look at the average performance seen across the 20 games tested. I'll also jump to a per game breakdown in a moment, but I wanted to show this graph first as it is typically how we evaluate the performance and value of GPUs. Whereas we saw a 3% gain on average for the Radeon GPUs, we're looking at no improvement for the RTX 3080 at 1080p, a 1% gain at 1440p, and if we round up, a 2% gain at 4K. So when taking gamer performance as a whole into consideration, resizable bar support does virtually nothing to change the picture for NVIDIA. So here's a look at the margins seen in each of the 20 games tested at 1080p, and as you can see here, there are indeed performance regressions. NVIDIA claims that they use game profiles to enable resizable bar only when it has a positive performance impact, but based on our findings, that simply doesn't appear to be true. The Division 2, for example, isn't a whitelisted game, and therefore the game profile should automatically disable resizable bar, resulting in no performance change. But that's simply not the case, and we found the same issue in multiple titles. Even at 1440p, we're still seeing a number of instances where performance regressed beyond the margin of error, and these findings were highly repeatable. It's a shame because had NVIDIA achieved what they'd claimed, there'd be no drawback to enabling resizable bar. Without the performance drop-offs, the technology would only boost performance overall by 2%, but again, without the disadvantages, there'd be no reason not to enable it by default. Resizable bar is a little more effective at 4K, and it's really only the Division 2 that saw performance regress beyond the margin of error. The 1-2% drop-off seen in Far Cry New Dawn and Dirt 5 are insignificant, although they were repeatable and more severe at the lower resolutions. Now, you might find this graph quite interesting. In the games that we can make a direct comparison with, my Radeon RX 6800 testing, which is 18 of the 20 games just tested, this is how the GeForce RTX 3080 and RX 6800 compare. Basically, whereas Nvidia saw a 1% improvement on average, AMD saw a 7% improvement, which isn't that surprising given AMD often saw much larger gains with resizable bar enabled in titles such as Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Hitman 2, Borderlands 3, Godfall, and many others. In fact, from this game's list, AMD only saw a performance decline in a single game, a small 2% drop in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. So as it stands, AMD appears to have better implemented their resizable bar support, which makes sense given they developed the Radeon RX 6000 series with it in mind. Whereas it's quite clearly been an afterthought for Nvidia, prompted only by AMD's decision to support it. It's great to see NVIDIA now supporting resizable bar with their latest generation GeForce 30 series GPUs. It's just a bit of a shame that it didn't work quite as well as I'd hoped based on what we had seen with the Radeon GPUs. It also doesn't appear as though they're disabling it in games that see a performance regression, which is a real shame, but again, perhaps that is something that they can fix. Likewise, this would be an amazing feature for AMD to implement, if they can, and it'd mean we're one step closer to testing with resizable bar enabled by default. It's worth noting that in order to enable or disable resizable bar yourself with either an AMD or Nvidia graphics card, you do need to completely reset the system, enter the BIOS and toggle it on or off there. So that's not exactly a practical solution, and I'd argue doing so means that the performance gains are no longer free as they come at the expense of your time and energy. It was also interesting to see that at best the RTX 3080 saw up to a 9% performance improvement at 1440p, seen in Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Forza Horizon 4, whereas the RX 6800 saw up to a 19% performance gain in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, though I didn't test Forza Horizon 4 at the time as it hadn't yet left the horrible Windows Store for Steam. So as it stands, resizable bar does appear to be much more beneficial for Radeon users, though it's not always going to result in positive performance. So whether or not you want to just enable it, even if you have a Radeon GPU and forget about it, well, yeah, probably still have to do a bit of research even if you do have an AMD GPU. For GeForce owners, it's really only going to be worth the trouble of enabling resizable bar for two to three games. Of course, we haven't tested all of the games on the whitelist, but of the ones we did test, two to three games, it seems like it is worthwhile. So it's gonna be up to you guys whether or not you bother, but I guess the point is at least now you have the option to enable resizable bar if you wish to. And it could improve over time. Anyway, that's all I've got to say on this topic. So if you liked the video, you guys know what to do. You can subscribe for more content as well. And if you'd like to become a member of the Harbour Unbox community, then you can do so over at Floatplane or Patreon. The links for those in the video description. You'll get access to the monthly live stream with Tim and myself. We'll be doing that uh, very shortly. Well, later this month, but 
we're, we're getting closer to the end of the month when we typically do it around the time we do our Q and A's. So we also do a Patreon Q and A, so you can get access to our exclusive Discord chat, and you can ask questions there, and of course interact with Tim and I on a daily basis, and the rest of the awesome Harbor Box community. Anyway, enough about that. If you're interested, as I said, links for that stuff are in the video description. If not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host Steve, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>